In my previous video, I showed you how to use the numeric and the return indexed array sort modifiers. In this video, I'll go over the sort on method. You can create an array of objects, and each object can have its own properties. In ActionScript 3, these properties are called fields. The sort on method is used to sort arrays on these fields. In this example, I'm going to create an array in which each element has four fields. I'm going to start with my pop method example that I showed you in part 7, my video on removing elements. I'm going to add two more buttons and change the labels. I'll name the green button BTN Green, the orange button BTN Orange, and the blue button BTN Blue. In my Actions panel, most of the code will remain the same. I'll keep the constructor methods and the add children methods, and the x and y arrays will remain the same. I'm going to change the characters array, and I'll change the pop element function. But I'll leave the place characters and the hide characters functions unchanged. The characters array will become a new blank array. Then I'll add the elements using the push method. Each element will have four fields. The object field will contain the movie clip object. The name field will contain the character's name. The alignment field will contain either good or evil, depending upon the character's alignment. And the rank field will contain a unique number identifying the character's rank. Now I'll fill the array with the remaining seven characters. I'm going to change the name of the pop element function to sort on name. This function will sort on the name fields in the characters array and looks like this. In the event listener, I'll change the function call from pop element to sort on name. Here's a quick review. When executed, this function will hide all the characters on the stage, sort the characters by their name field, and then place the characters back on the stage according to their position in the sorted array. OK, let's test the movie. I'll click on the green button. And now all the characters have been arranged alphabetically by name. In my previous video, I showed you how to apply a sort modifier to a sort method. In this example, I'm going to show you how to apply a sort modifier to a sort on method. I'll return to my previous example and open my actions panel. I'm going to create a new function that will sort the characters on their alignment field. I'll copy the sort on name function and paste it here. I'll change the name of this function from sort on name to sort on alignment. I'm going to sort the characters on their alignment field and then add the descending modifier, like this. In the event listener, I'll change BTN green to BTN orange and change the function call from sort on name to sort on alignment. Then I'll test the movie. First, I'll sort the characters on their name field. Then, I'll sort the characters on their alignment field. Now, all the good characters are placed here, and all the evil characters are placed over here. 
Not only can you apply one sort modifier to a sort on method, you can also apply several sort modifiers. In this example, I'll show you how to apply two different sort modifiers to a sort on method. I'll return to my previous example and open my actions panel. I'm going to create a new function that will sort the characters on their rank field. I'll copy my sort on alignment function and paste it here. I'll change the name of the function from sort on alignment to sort on rank DESC. I'm going to sort the characters on their rank field numerically and then add the descending modifier like this. Notice I use the bitwise OR operator to separate the two array modifiers. In the event listener, I'll change BTN orange to BTN blue and change the function call from sort on alignment to sort on rank DESC. Then I'll test the movie. First, I'll sort the characters on their name field. Next, I'll sort the characters on their alignment field. And finally, I'll sort the characters on their rank field in descending order. In my next video, I'll introduce you to callback functions. To learn more, visit my website at LarryStimson.com